So in a couple of videos of the last couple of weeks, we've taken a look at how to use the Hello theme as the basis for building your own website. Reason being, it's incredibly fast and simple. But how fast is it? In today's video, we're going to take a look and test it out. Okay, so if you are wondering whether the Hello theme is for you, then this video is going to help you make that decision. We're going to create a very simple, typical looking website, custom header, custom footer, and some basic page content. We're then going to jump over onto some online speed test platforms, test it out, and we're going to get a mean average then to find out exactly how good this is. Then we're going to also install a couple of speed optimization tools and see how they impact the overall speed of this theme. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Test, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. So let's just jump over to the dashboard, open up the actual Hello theme and see what we've got set up and then start benchmarking. So before we start, let me just quickly run through what I've got set up so far. We're running WordPress, the latest version. We're on PHP 7.2. I've got only the hello theme set up in there. There's no additional themes and I've got no plugins currently installed. So we've got a completely clean, fresh copy. There's no caching option set up on my server. That's all disabled. So if we take a look at the current site, you can see all that's on there is the basic homepage you have with WordPress, no styling, no header, no footer, just the blank theme in a clean installer WordPress. So the first thing I want to do is just run this test on Pingdom. Now, as I'm based in the UK, I'm going to set that up to be London for my test server. So it's closest to where I'm actually located and also using a UK based hosting company. So again, it makes sense for me to make sure this is tested in the UK. So I'm going to put in the test domain and we're just going to hit the start test and see what results we get. So we take a look at the results. You can see we're getting a a for performance, we've got a page size of just over 18 kilobytes and a load time of 350 milliseconds with six requests. If we take a look at the improving speed performance options, you can see we've pretty much got the green light on pretty much well on everything, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that test two more times to get a mean average to see if there's any differences in there. And then we'll take a look at GT metrics and see what results that gives us. Now I've hopped over to GT metrics now and we're going to take a look at running the tests on here. Now I'll get to the results on this particular section after we've gone through and run the tests on both of these, got the mean average, and then we'll move on to the next step. But as you can see, again, I'm setting this up to be in London, UK. Everything else is set to pretty much the standard affair you'd expect. So let's just hit analyze on there. Let's let that run through the first analysis of the site and see what results we get based upon that nice, clean, simple site. And there we go. From our first test, we've got pretty good store, score. We've got A's across the board. Our fully loaded time is 417 milliseconds, and we're getting a page size of just over 19 kilobytes. And again, we've got the same six requests. And if we look down at the page speed, we've got pretty much greens on everything on there as well. Yep, looking good. And on Y slow, you can see it's telling us we should use a content delivery network, which it always tells us to do that. So we're always going to get a little bit of a drop in score from that until we actually do use a CDN. So expect that when you're using GT metrics. Now again, I'm going to run through these tests two more times just to get a mean average. Okay, so I've finished the tests now on GT metrics and also on Pingdom. Now GT metrics gives us a time of fully loaded of just over 400 milliseconds, which I think is pretty good. However, when we run it on Pingdom, we got the third time, and I run this a couple of times just to check, kind of a strange anomaly where it was bumping it over a second. So it brought the mean average up to just over half a second. However, still a pretty good starting point. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, install Elementor and Elementor Pro. Then we're going to run the test again with no content just to see how much of an impact of the speed and the load time and the number of requests just installing Elementor and Elementor Pro actually make to a theme. Okay, so we've now got Elementor and Elementor Pro installed. So let's go back over to Pingdom and GT Metrics and let's run those tests again. Again, I'll show you the first test and then I'll run two more additional tests to get an average. So let's keep the tests off with Pingdom. So let's just run our test on there. Let that go through and see what kind of figure that gives us and how many more additional sort of calls we've got to the, the server and so on just with those installed. Okay, so after running the first test, you can see our performance is still exactly the same. Our page size is still the same. So it's good to see that we're not getting any increase in our page size if we're not actually using Elementor on that page. Our load time, 
that kind of fluctuates anyway unfortunately it's one of those things but 351 milliseconds is pretty quick and as you can see no additional requests we scroll down we're still getting greens on everything on there so that's pinged them i'm going to run the test two more times on there and then we're going to jump to gt metrics and take a look at the figures we get on there Okay, we're over into GT Metrics now. Everything is set up exactly the same as before, running it through to a London UK based server. Let's hit analyze on there and let's take a look at what results we get on GT Metrics. And okay, we're still getting pretty much consistent scores across the board there. Again, you can see we still run on six requests. Our loaded time is down to just under 400 milliseconds. So looking pretty good. And again, if we take a look at the page speed, Everything is green and the Y slow still gives us a CDN error. So let me run through these two more times and let's take a look at the results on that. Okay, so the results are in and let's just have a quick check on those. On GT metrics, we're getting just under half a second. On Pingdom, we're getting just under 400 milliseconds. So again, still pretty respectable times. But now we're going to go through and create a typical Elemental page. We're going to use a header and footer being based upon templates, which is something you'd need to do when you're using a theme like Hello. And we're just going to create a typical kind of basic page inside. We're going to run the test then and see how that makes an impact on the overall results. Okay, so let's just jump back into the dashboard and take a look at making those additions. Now for ease, I'm only going to use the predefined templates that are part of Elementor Pro anyway. Just helps us speed up the whole process of doing things on here and it just means that we've got something really simple to take a look at. Obviously, if you are dealing with more complex layouts, it's going to have an impact, but I'm just using this as the basis to give an example of what it could be like. So I'm going to quickly go ahead, create a header and a footer and some content, and then we're going to jump back in and start benchmarking with those new additions. Okay, so there's our typical page layout setup. We're using a header and a footer as part of a template, and then we just created a page. Typical thing you'd expect to do with Elementor, and especially if you're using the Hello theme. So with that in place, let's just run some benchmarks on there and see how that affects our overall scores. So first of all, let's test it out with Pingdom. So we'll hit Start Test on there, let it run through, and just give us some benchmarking figures. And there we go, there's our results. As you can see, our performance grade has now dropped down to a B as opposed to an A. And our page size, load time and requests have now all increased a fair all amount. But you'd expect that to happen when you have images that are not necessarily the most optimized. So always bear that in mind. This is a typical page layout just to give you an idea. Obviously, you'd optimize your images much, much better if you were working on a website of your own. So I'm going to run through this test two more times, then jump over to GT Metrics and we'll take a look at what the figures are inside there. So now let's take a look in GT Metrics and let's hit the Analyze on there and let it run through now. Give us our results so we can find out how good or bad this actually scores in GT Metrics in comparison to just using Elementor on its own. And there we go. As you can see, as you'd expect, the scores have now dropped down a little bit and some of the figures have increased because obviously we've got a full page to look at. So our full loaded time is now up to 2.4 seconds, which is a little bit long. Page size, as you'd expect, is the same as the last one and the number of requests. So that's all looking pretty much the same kind of thing. We've got some information then below on page speed. Things we can take a look at, like serving scaled images. If we take a look at Y slow. Again, you can see the CDN is something that's popping up in there that's pushing our score down on Y slow. And we've also got the thing to make fewer requests to HTTP. So some caching should help reduce the number of requests to HTTP calls are being made on there. But like I say, this is just a benchmark. So I'm going to run through two more times, get the figures, and come back to you then what the results are. Okay, so let's quickly go through those results. Pingdom comes back with a mean average of just over one and a half seconds, which is pretty respectable. It's not too bad at all. Whereas the GT Metrics comes back with a result of just over two seconds, which again is not ideal. But if we had some caching on there, we had some using a CDN to deliver the content and so on, we could get those, those times down a little bit, I think, anyway. This is just, like I say, straight out of the box. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up to my server settings and I'm going to enable the actual options to cache some of the information that's on there. Now, this isn't going to be something that everybody has. It depends on the server setup and all those kinds of things. For me, it's something that I find quite useful. So I'm going to jump over to my control panel and all I'm going to do is the compress content option. I'm going to say I'm going to compress all of the content. If I wanted to, I could go through and just specify exactly what content I wanted to compress. I'm going to leave it set to the, the simple value of everything. Update my settings. I'm going to jump back over. We'll refresh the page and we'll take a look then at what the ping values are on Pingdom. So again, let's just run through the first one on there. UK, start our test, refresh the page, and hit start test. Okay, we go to the queue, so I'm going to pause this and wait until we come back with the first result. Okay, and there's the results. Nothing drastic 
in all honesty, quite a tiny, tiny difference. The load time has gone down a tiny bit. Number of requests, so on, all exactly the same thing. So again, as always, I'm going to run this two more times, get a mean average, and then move up to GT metrics. And once more, we're at the GT metrics. So let's just run that test and see what results we get on GT metrics. And there we go. The first results are in. So we're getting 2.4 millis, sorry, 2.4 seconds, and pretty much the same as we saw before. So I don't think we're going to see much of a difference on here. But I will run those two more tests just to check and just see if everything is the same. And there we go, we're all done. So we're getting figures of around about a little over two seconds on the load time when we're using Pingdom. And GT Metrics is just giving us just a little under 2.2 seconds. So the last thing I'm going to do is run Auto Optimize on the actual site itself and see if that makes any difference whatsoever to the overall load times, the requests, and the total page size. So let's go through and install that plugin now, and we'll take a look at what results we get from using that. Okay, so that's installed. Let's just go through to the settings and just set some basics up on there. I'm not going to go into the advanced settings. I'm just going to keep this really simple for your average user that doesn't necessarily know exactly what all these little tweaks and things do. So we say optimize our HTML, optimize our JavaScript, optimize our CSS. We'll save and empty any cache on there. And then finally, we'll jump up to the extra and take a look. We'll leave the Google fonts as they are. We won't worry about optimizing the images on the fly. Uh, we will say remove the emojis and we'll remove any query strings and we'll leave everything else as is. So we say, okay, save that out and let's run those tests again. So let's come back over to Pingdom. Let's just refresh that and start the test. So start our test and see what results we get now with auto optimize installed and with a basic configuration. Okay, so straight out of the box with nothing other than just the basics, you can see that's made a massive impact upon the performance, the page size, the number of requests and the overall load time. So that's good to see that we can cut that down. Now we're just over at one second. Like I say, this is the first result. So let me run that two more times. Let's see what we get at the end of it. But already we're seeing this making a decent difference and get us closer to that time with just Elementor installed without actually page content. So that's a pretty good start. Okay, so let's just run the GT metrics. Now it's the final test across the board. Let's see what we get on here and see if this shows a similar increase in speed and a cut down in both file size and the number of requests to the server. And there we go. As we can see, we've got a decent cut down on speed. Total file size isn't really reflective with Pingdom. It's looking pretty much the same as it was before, but the number of requests have definitely come down. So we're seeing a definite improvement there. So like I say, I'm going to run this two more times, then we're going to just recap and find out exactly what our results are across the board for all of these different tests. Okay, and the final results are in. So on Pingdom, we're getting a little over a one second load time. And on GT metrics, a little over one and a half seconds load time. So both pretty respectable. The number of requests have been cut down considerably. So that's a good thing. So that kind of gives you a feel for exactly what's going on in the different stages of the site. Okay, so there we go. There's our full test of the Hello theme. The perfect theme for Elementor? Well, hopefully this video will help you decide whether it's the perfect option for you. Now, I'd love to get your feedback on this. Have you tested out? Did these results surprise you, shock you, or were they kind of what you were expecting? Let me know in the comments section below. Let's get that conversation started and see what you think of the Hello theme. Now, speaking of the Hello theme and what it kind of offers, if you found something that's better, let me know in the comments section below because I'd love to take a look and test that out and take it for a spin and see how I feel it kind of stacks up against the Hello theme itself. Well, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's perfectly fine. But please let me know in the comment section why you did or didn't like the video. As always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tatson. Until next time, take care.